The other day, we're amplifying the key of communion and how it affected how, 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 how hell was paralyzed and how when we proclaim the death of Jesus Christ, we spoke about the key of death of Jesus Christ. It's a key. And you're going to see the key number three, which is the key of worship. Hallelujah. And I'm going to give you two keys today. Now, I spoke, those of you who were attending last, last week, Wednesday, also on, on, on uh, our midnight prayer, our midnight prayer last week, you, you, you realize I said certain statements about, about, about the key. Now, listen to this. The Bible says, let's go to the book of Revelation 3, verse 7 and 8. Now, I'm talking about the keys of death and hell. Why? Why? Okay, maybe before we just recap, what is the meaning of the keys of death and hell? Why the keys of death and hell? Jesus told us in Revelation 1 that I am Jesus. I was dead. Now I am alive. And then being alive means that I carry the keys of death and hell. In other words, hell cannot come and have power or dominion over us. Do you understand? Hell is another word for hell is Sheol. Do you understand? Sheol, which is grave. The power of the grave. Oh. That power of the grave was on Bama's paralyzed. Hmm. I feel like praying before I go on. I said I'm going to show you something. Eh? Okay, go to Osiah. Nah, this is what God says. Can you read? Power of the grave. Wow, look at that. I will buy you. That word ransom means buying. I will buy you from the power of what? The grave. And I will redeem you them from what? Death. It says all oh, death. I will be your black. I don't think you understand that statement. It's like this man, God is telling death. <laughs> I don't think you understand the statement. God is telling death. When I go far, me and Kulunkul, you go see for go away. I will be a black, I will black you. you. You know, when you have leprosy, but, but selling a lep what is the, the, the best definition of a black? Who knows English more than me? Hmm? A plague. A plague, yes, it's a plague. It's, it's no, no, it's not so it's associated with gula, something like it's a disease, like a plague. Like COVID was a plague. Like malaria, yes. It's a plague. It's like a plague. You know, contagious. Oh, that's a one. That's a powerful one. I'll be contagious. I will haunt you. Continue to put that verse. I just want to show you. I think it, 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 it correlates with what I'm doing here. It says, Oh, grave, I will be your distraction. Pity is hidden from my eyes. catching this thing. So I want to tell you about that grave grave speaks. Grave is a living organism. Grave is something that is alive. You go to the grave. You think you're going to talk to the ancestors. <laughs> Why will God say I will destroy you the grave? And I will ransom people from the power of the grave. Eh? Why will God say that? That means something is about, there's something about the grave. Listen to this. When Jesus says, I have the keys of death and the grave. Keys of death and the grave. Hell. Hell. Hell is the grave. So deep down there, there's, there's a place called hell. The Bible says it's beneath the earth. That's why even in mining, they, you, 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 those who understand mining, they cannot go too deep because down there they will tell you that there's something. Those who understand quantum physics, they talk about the black holes. 
And black holes are, 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 are in, in, they call it infernos. These are, this, this, is, this is part of hell. But the Bible says that that thing speaks and God says, listen, I will ransom you. I will buy you out. And how will you buy you out? Jesus says, I have the keys of death and hell. I have the keys and I say, he's the key number one that I gave you with is the number supreme key of, 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 of the power of the, gra- of, the, of the grave and death. It is called the death of Jesus. When Jesus died, the Bible says he dismantled the systems and the structures of hell. There was chaos in hell when Jesus Christ went there. He went and took all the keys. What put Jesus on the, on, the, on, on the grave to die? One, his death. Two, his love. His love took him there. If it was not his love, he would not have gone there. And what was he going to do? To take keys. Let me tell you, Pastor Bam. Hell can influence you while you are here on earth. And there are souls now who are alive here on earth who are trapped right in hell. They cannot do anything. Like somebody, there's a place, it's just I don't have time to, to show you the scriptures. There's a place there in hell called aban- abandonment. Where a person is being, ab- every time people abandon you, abandon you. There's a place called forgetfulness where people will forget you. They forget you. Like, literally, they just, how? Oh, always they forget you they say, they say the power of the grave will not have any power over you I said the power of the grave will not have any power over you you see when I tell young people don't allow your parents to take you to the grave so they're going to talk to the parents no, they're going to talk to demons there to harass you forever but I want to tell you today ah grave has no power over you. Uh, he says, death, I will pluck you. Do you know what the apostle Paul says? He says, oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, death, where is your sting? Let me tell you, death cannot sting you. Lift up your arm of strength. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for this revelation in my life. I thank you that you have ransomed me from the power of death. From the power of the grave. Right now, I charge the testimony of the blood of Jesus against the systems and structures of the grave. I dismantle the power of the grave. Say, blood of Jesus. Say, blood of Jesus. Say, like you may say, blood of Jesus. Say, like you may say, blood of Jesus. Terminate, terminate. Terminate, terminate the power of the grave. Oh, say blood of Jesus. Terminate, terminate the power of the grave over my life. The power of death over my life. The power of the grave over my life. Right now, I silence voices from the power of the grave against my progress, against my upliftment. I declare and declare that grave shall not have any dominion over me. The grave shall not have dominion over me. I say the grave shall not, domino, shall not have dominion over me. Say my father, my father. Jesus has the keys of death and hell. Right now, every attack of death over my life. Plug it now. Plug it now! Plug it now! Plug it now! Plug it now! Let me tell you, when you say these things, you will not die before your time. I'm telling you, death will be far away from you. Like, very, when I say very, very, when death comes into your home and knock and say, I'm coming to take you, it will say, is it you? Ah! And it ran because it will see the light. That light will brighten it. Are you catching what I'm saying? Are you catching what I'm saying? So the grave will not have any power over you. 
when they go, I heard of this man who was testifying, I think he was in Jobek, he was saying, when he wanted money, they told him that he must go to a cemetery there and be naked for seven days, days there. Yes. You see, you think where you go and, and you go and then the guy will be leaving all his things there. Then you go to that cemetery. Oh, my father. Oh, and then when you do, you take all what you have left there. Eh? So I was testifying and saying, if it had not been Jesus, he's a pastor, this guy now. He was testifying. That they told him. Imagine, he has to go the naked, seven days. You know, people, when they want money, they do things. <laughs> seven days. No food, no water, nothing. But when pastor tells you, come for three days, you say, ah, pastor. No, 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 no. <laughs> this guy was prepared. Yeah? And he did it. And he said, this thing worked for him for 10 years. Yeah. Then he knew that he has to renew the contract afterward. He wasn't ready because of the things that were happening in his family. Are you catching what I'm saying? And when I tell you, Pastor, come, let's pray for 10 hours. Say, hey, Pastor, 10 hours. 10 hours. Do you think you want to remove the burdens of poverty in your life? The power of poverty shall not rule over your home. In the name of Jesus.